Hey everyone, I'm Martin Stożek. I go by Perk. I currently work at Canonical, but the last four years I've spent at Sumologic working on the Open Telemetry Collector offering on the telemetry data uh, collection. And uh, I have this case study to share with you. Hey everyone, I'm Martin Stożek. I go by Perk. I currently work at Canonical, but the last four years I've spent at Sumologic working on the Open Telemetry Collector offering on the telemetry data uh, collection. And uh, I have this case study to share with you, uh, to, show re to, to show you the road that we went uh, from, from many different collectors, supporting many different collectors to a single standard and what we found around, along the way. If you think about the collectors that are out there, there is a collector zoo. Like there are so many different collectors. They have different shape, uh, shapes and sizes. They are, they are just different. They have different configuration. They have different con uh, documentation. The community is different. They support different telemetry types. Uh, they, they have different features. It's just not easy, right? Um, uh, you might end up with a headache uh, should you be uh, choosing the telemetry collector one. Telemetry collector because because uh, it is not an easy task. Maybe you would maybe you think okay I will just choose whatever people are using on the Kubernetes and that would be okay. But this is a de facto de facto telemetry collector standard. It's still not easy because there are so many agents. Again, it's uh, it's not like uh, one or two. Uh, it's five in here, but it might be more. Uh, and we had this problem at Sumologic as well. Uh, Sumologic started with supporting those, and then we figured out that they uh, that doesn't work that well to us. We and to our customers actually, we got to do better here, uh, and we ended up with open telemetry. Let me tell you that story. But where it all started? It started with those de facto Kubernetes telemetry standards, the telemetry data collection standards, because that wouldn't be very weird if you thought about your telemetry collection on Kubernetes and you ended up with those, right? For logs, you might use LoND, right? Because it has a lot of plugins, the community is there, the documentation is there, the features are there. It is being written in Ruby, and because it is written in Ruby, it has its problems. It does the job, but it is just a little bit odd, I would say. Uh, but you don't feel that at the very, 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 very beginning. So you might be okay. Maybe you would use Fluent Beat, right? It is crazy fast. It has this great memory usage, right? And it is written in C. So you, you, you gotta be careful with fixing bugs and also uh, introducing new features. Obviously, C is not, uh, uh, isn't, will, will never be easy as Go. Um, so uh, it has its problems uh, around here. Then for, Promet for metrics, you probably end up with Prometheus for good reasons, right? Because Prometheus is a great database. It has uh, this community, big community, documentation, features. It uses memory, but it is a database, so it needs to use a memory. But what Sumo Logic did is Sumo Logic used it as a forwarder, data forwarder. And I know that right now there is a Prometheus agent that just that just forwards the data. Uh, but but that was not the case uh, a while ago. And when you use it as a forwarder, when you used it as a forwarder back then, uh, it had it, uh, its problems. So for our use case, that was a misuse. Actually, we use this like there's this database, but we don't use it as a data database that that sent a uh, uh, wrong uh, message actually to to people that were using uh, our stack. We didn't have traces at the time, and for tracing, we were so lucky because exactly at this point, the open telemetry emerged, and when open telemetry emerged, we looked at it and immediately saw that hey. This is very, very interesting project. It has all of the uh, all of the features that that we need, uh, and it seems great. Let's try it out. Now, why? Because Open Telemetry tries to solve proper problems in the proper places. It gives you the libraries for your languages, and it gives you the collector to collect 
the data that you have created with your libraries. Also, it gives you the protocol, it gives you the standard, it gives you the schema for your metadata, for example, and it doesn't give you a backend. And what does it mean that it doesn't give you a backend? It means that right now the backend that can be vendor provided, we have a lot of vendors out there that actually would love the idea. Like they would like to support open telemetry. They can compete on the backend right now. They don't need to reinvent the wheel on the telemetry data collection and creation. They don't need to create their own libraries. They don't need to create their own uh, agents. And also they all consume the, the same type of data. So you as a user, you don't have to choose at the very beginning and be so much you know, um, uh, locked into the uh, one environment or the other. So actually, uh, this makes a lot of sense uh, because you have the project that is supported by many vendors, by users. It is actually hugely popular. It is the second one after the uh, Kubernetes, which is, which is uh, uh, for the CNCF, which is great. So like I said, OpenTelemetry gives you a specification. So it is not a de facto standard. It is like a real standard that has been created before. And you don't need to dig into the code to see what the, what the code is supposed to do. You have the spec for that. You have the language SDKs with many languages actually supported. And you have collector, which is a very, very smart thing because it has those receivers, right? Processors and exporters. All of them, all of those are wrapped in pipelines. Uh, and all of those components can be can be used uh, in whatever manner. Uh, like you can you can compose uh, your collector uh, using those components. You don't you, you don't need to use whatever is out there. Why am I mentioning that? Because uh, there are a couple of distros of the Open Telemetry Collector, and this is actually just a little bit of Zoo as well. Hopefully, this will be um, cleaned up just a little bit more. What is the situation? You have this core distribution, right? Which has only the core components. Uh, you might find yourself pretty quickly in a position when this is not enough. And those core components are just not enough. This is not a battery is included. The batteries included is another distribution called, con called contract distribution. The problem with that is that even though this is a battery is included, Open Telemetry pro Project says that, hey, you should not be using that because we don't guarantee anything about the contrib. And that is very fair because all the vendors that are contributing those um, components to the contrib, they need to guarantee that, but OpenTelemetry cannot. So there is a binary, but nobody actually you know, feel um, accountable um, for, it, uh, for it at the point. So what do you do? You could use the custom distributions from the vendors. The vendors take those components, they build their own distributions. Grafana agent uh, takes some of those components, uh, don't use the, uh, doesn't use the open telemetry internally, but that is for good reason. Like I, I've heard that the, this helps with the performance, uh, but we are, uh, we, we are there to, 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 to see that. Uh, hopefully in the future, uh, then you could use the distributions from Sumo or AWS. They are like more uh, uh, vanilla distributions. They they will have the same configuration as the core or contrib. Uh, and those vendors actually say, hey, we created those builds, those hotel call builds for you. You can use them, we support them, right? And you know, if you don't like those for any reason, you can actually build your own custom distribution as well. This is This is fairly easy at this point. Uh, and that is that is that is a great thing as well. You don't need to use uh, what is out there. You can you can just choose your uh, components. So what do we have at Sumo? We had those agents that we needed to switch from, uh, and we started with traces. Like I said, in March 2020, there was this open telemetry. We thought, yes, we are going to use that for our tracing. And we pretty much quickly, pretty quickly found out that there is this uh, data float uh, attached to uh, tracing. That is not specifically open telemetry thing because that is like how traces just are. You can create a lot of data. You can do the same with logs and metrics, but with traces, it just tends to be uh, a lot of data and people are uh, not not prepared for this. You can find this, you can fight this uh, in two ways. You can, or actually more, but uh, uh, you can, but, but, but what we've tried was the 
filtering. Uh, so you can filter uh, some data, but the problem with filtering is that you need to uh, have all of the spans for a given trace. And because you need to have all of the, all, all of the spans, your memory on this gateway that does the filtering can actually uh, grow up pretty quickly. So it's better to do this filtering probably somewhere on the backend. And that is what vendors do. They just filter on the backend. And you can do sampling, but with sampling, you never know how many, how much, you know, uh, how much data you want to sample out, right? Uh, so you probably would like to use both. So you would like to have some sampling uh, and then filter out everything that is not um, error or or warning, for example. Uh, open telemetry collector doesn't have a good answer to this as of now, uh, unfortunately. And I hope this uh, will be work on. Uh, in the future. Then for the metadata layer, we used FluentD to enrich the data with the metadata. Uh, and the FluentD had this problem that it was single threaded and because it, it was single threaded, the performance was not very, that was, was not great. Uh, what we found out when we switched to open telemetry collector that the Golang performance is pretty good, especially con comparing to Ruby one. But the most important feature here was that when we switched from FluentDs to OTCs, we removed the back pressure from our Prometheus. Prometheus, when it was sending the data, it was sending metrics, it was sending it using the remote write. And the remote write is a feature that really, really, really doesn't like being back pressured, unfortunately. When you do that, your memory consumption goes out of the roof and it's, it, it is pretty terrible. I know that it is being actively worked on and I've heard that it is going to be fixed, which is great. Uh, it was not the case back then. Uh, so, so, so we had problems when we switched to OTC from FluentD, we stopped having problems with the uh, Prometheus uses. And also our Prometheus uses of memory uh, just went down. So not only uh, FluentD's memory, but also uh, uh, Prometheus uses memory. And here I have some data. So across the cluster for the data that we've sent, we needed 38 CPUs of, uh, for FluentDs. And then for the same amount of data, we needed only 13 CPUs for uh, Open Telemetry Collector, uh, which is three times. That's good, right, isn't it? Then for the memory, we went down from 2200 of, uh, gigabytes of RAM to just 75, which is again, three times. But then we started uh, looking uh, more into that and we found out that we can go actually as less as 11, as low as 11. So that is 20 times less. That just, you know, money that is not being uh, burned. Then with the instances, we went down from 85 to 20 at the beginning and then even to 11, which is eight times less. And this is important because you don't want to have too many instances poking around your API server on the Kubernetes uh, to get the metadata uh, because API server uh, does not like that uh, uh, very much. And also if you have huge cluster, like a really, really huge cluster, this stuff just start uh, matter actually. Then we said, okay, so we, we have on traces of telemetry, we switched for metadata, it worked, it worked okay. Let's see what we can do with logs. We didn't have that many problems with logs, but we wanted to have our uh, environment actually uh, homogeneous. So even though with uh, FluentBeat you have great CPU and memory usage, uh, it didn't support metrics and traces at the time. It does now, so should it support them back then the story might might have been different actually, but, 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 but it isn't. We switched to OTC. We found out that the CPU usage is actually very good. Memory usage is reasonable, especially comparing to the code that is written in C. But the most important thing is that there was no major feature missing. So all of the features that we needed were there. Some of them, if they were missing, we just added them. Our customers, Sumology customers asked uh, Sumo to add some, some features that, that they've been added. Uh, and some other people actually are contrib contributing there as well, uh, obviously, because it's a huge project. And it, it, it is funny because sometimes you find yourself in a situation when, hey, I would like to add this one feature that I find. And then, you know, you go back after three months because that's when you find out, that's when you find time to do this, to only find out that the feature is already there because someone else has added it, which is 
great, actually, you don't have to do it anymore, then it's bad because you uh, just lost your chance uh, to, to contribute. That is, that is something that is uh, actually uh, uh, funny and very, very cool uh, about this project. Uh, then we, last but not least, switched the backend for metrics, which is Prometheus. Um, like I said, we misuse Prometheus because we use it as a forwarder. It was not a forward back then at the time. Um, and we found out that the, there are some quirks uh, around the names. There might be some quirks, like the dot versus underscore. You something found out that uh, they are just different. But again, the resource usage, resource usage, even though when we stopped back pressuring Prometheus, uh, it did not add a lot of RAM, all of the RAM in the world. Uh, if it, we still found that the Open Telemetry Collector uh, actually used even less. And one thing, one, one other thing to add here is that the, there's this thing called Prometheus Receiver that uh, actually helps you get the data like Prometheus and huge shout out to the team that did that. Uh, it reuses the Prometheus, uh, Prometheus metrics um, inside. And it works great. Like you just have this drop in, replay, drop in replacement uh, uh, almost. You have the same configuration. Whatever configuration makes sense in the open telemetry collector world, it just works. And it's so, so easy to switch. Uh, we are very, very happy with that. What were the outcomes you know, uh, in the numbers? Uh, we went down for CPUs five times and with memory, we went down five times as well. So we were able to switch from those uh, agents into the open telemetry collector. And now you are able to send all those data to your uh, backend or actually backends. You don't need to send those to only one backend because all of them actually support open telemetry as of now, uh, which, is, which is a huge win for you as a customer, as a user, isn't it? Were there any issues? Uh, yes, there were some issues. Some of them were uh, more funny. Some of them were less funny. Uh, but most of the time, I think we survived. Let me tell you about this one issue, for example, that when you wanted to get the logs from your file and you had an empty line, depending on where this empty line was and how many empty lines, you could have your file not read, read twice, or read in a loop, right? So. That was, yeah, yeah, that was funny. But that was in 2022. This bug, obviously, those bugs are not there anymore. Uh, and many others that are so, so easy are not there anymore as well. And as of now, the state is actually good. Like if you use components that are used uh, a lot, uh, the bugs found there are going to be a lot more sophisticated, not long hanging fruit as, like at all. If you use a component that is not that, um, uh, that that much used, uh, you know, a, a across all of those components, you might find bugs there. Uh, but it just life. I think it's the same for any other project. So no surprise here. All in all, we are actually Sumo Logic is was was very very happy uh, with, with with the stability of that, and uh, we didn't hear much much complaining from customers as well. That being said, I hope that you enjoyed this uh, presentation. I hope that you feel encouraged to try Open Telemetry Collector yourself if you didn't have to, if you, if you, if you didn't uh, use it as of now. Um, and if you'd like to see the slides, they're available here. Thank you very much, and I'll see you around. Happy collecting. Hi, everybody. So we sort of have an extended Q&A for the end. Um, and I also had some data to sort of present because Perk had some really interesting insights on the migration path uh, going from FluentD to using an open telemetry collector. Um, interestingly enough, let me switch this so everybody can see what I can see. Is it three? Three? So um, if you wanted to look at how the benchmarks were done uh, artificially rather than using the um, production workload, um, I made this handy thing. And you can look on your phone. You can see um, 
some, a coworker of ours, Matt Rumian, who had put together um, how the tests were actually done uh, op in an open source environment. And I can switch to that now. So um, there were two different Helm chart versions that were tested here. One was the Helm chart V, well, one of the V3 versions versus our uh, V2. The V2, again, was using Fluent D directly, um, I guess some, somewhat as like middleware between uh, the open telemetry collector and, uh, and us. And then uh, versus using the Sumo Logic uh, OTEL collector directly. And um, uh, Andre here, did you want to go through some of this? Uh, okay, so uh, this I think only covers Fluent D versus Open Telemetry Collector, but the interesting part is that I saw is if you send for one minute, is it there? If for one minute you will be sending five megabytes per, of logs per second, which is 300 megabytes of logs during one minute, uh, this will, uh, Fluent D will use the whole uh, single uh, CPU, because that's what it's capable to do, for three and a half minutes. So logs have been sent for one minute, but three and a half minutes of sending by Fluent D. So, yeah, you can use Fluent D, of course, but you will use a lot of resources. And for OTL, the same amount of logs, it's basically instantaneous and it uses 16%. But that's an easy one. Comparing things to Fluent D is an easy target, right? <laughs> Probably when we would compare it to Fluent Bit, it would look completely different. Maybe not the other way around, but different. I'm not seeing Eduardo Silva here. He, I think he originally wrote Fluent Bit, so he could probably tell. Uh, Fluent Bit is definitely very, very performant, but we actually had really serious issues in big environments. And those issues aren't easy to fix because it's C, because it's a mature code base. We just hope to not go into that place with the OTEL collector in the future. <laughs> so Perk in his presentation had said that it was about five times uh, more efficient in terms of CPU usage. And that was with using the um, everything under production. The way that Matt did uh, the benchmarks here was that he actually created a, sort of like a logs creator, logs generator, and you can look at the file, nerd out at some time, whenever, if you're curious. Um, and then this was all kind of done uh, just, to, just to run a variety of different benchmarks when they were um, upgrading on different Helm chart versions. And you can see that it's consistent, uh, the data is actually consistent with our production. Um, although I think everybody individually might have different experiences. For Prometheus, so what, uh, there was a very nice talk from Brian Borem for, about Prometheus just a couple minutes ago. Uh, I think my takeaway is uh, if you can, just don't use Prometheus at all. <laughs> we were using Prometheus as a data forwarder, as Perk mentioned, and we're currently using Auto Call. And it's fine. I mean, Autocall still uses uh, Prometheus libraries under the hood when you use Prometheus uh, receiver. So it's it's still five times better. Uh, but I think ideally, in in near future, uh, the whole world will switch to OTLP, including Kubernetes API server and other components, and we will not have to scrape those crazy amounts of. Uh, metrics from a one big uh, source. Yeah, Prometheus is a whole other story. Metrics is a whole other story. But um, yeah, then we'll have we would have to do a whole other set of benchmarks and tests to see uh, the improvements on the metric side over the log side. Um, but are there any questions from folks here? And you can just go and up, or or you can yell. Yelling also works. <laughs> I'm going to ask. So um, this is, what is the output there? Is it always OTLP? Uh, what is the output? Is it always OTLP? Because uh, we, we did some other tests uh, there at Grafana and ingesting Prometheus and outputting Prometheus is always gonna be more performant with the Prometheus agent than with the collector. Oh. 
We yeah. output OTLP. Sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you convert right. Prometheus to OTLP, and then you speed out OTLP. Mm -hmm. the, the tests here are with logs, so we would have to like. So the tests here are with logs. We would have to like create a whole other test bench based on our newest Helm Sharp deployment that was just announced this morning um, against the prior one, which was using Prometheus's middleware. So the the performance gains uh, would be. Like, I, I mean, we, we would have to just rerun the benchmarks. So we don't have that data on hand right now. We can talk about what happened in production, right? In production, we already had previously replaced the metadata layer uh, with open telemetry collector. We knew that we want everything to be hotel. So we needed what uh, the, the, the setup with the metadata layer replaced was that Prometheus would scrape and it was sent over remote write to the remote write receiver from open telemetry collector. And we replaced it with the hotel that scrapes with the Prometheus receiver and sends out with the OTLP exporter. So I've got two quick questions. Oh, wait, it's on. So um, two quick ones, really. The first one, there was a talk about moving from metrics. And, you know, we looked not too much, but we looked in early 2022 at uh, open telemetry, because we were going to use some of that for tracing, and we looked at it for metrics, and they had the metrics when you're talking about the generic kind of system metrics, but they didn't have the maturity, say, of something like a telegraph agent, and it felt like we were going to put open telemetry on only to then talk to something like a telegraph that we end up writing ourselves to get a lot of the metrics out. And so it, it felt kind of a backward step to try and reduce the number of, you know, branded agents, say, on the node. Um, I, I don't know what your thoughts are now about that because I haven't looked again, but it was, it was very generic, the amount they got, and it wasn't really mature like a metric service. And then secondly, a follow-on question, how does this work at scale? So Prometheus works quite well at scale when you isolate them. You see across different clusters, and then you have them forward on, and then maybe you leverage something like a Thanos or something on the back end. But really those two questions then, kind of unrelated, but just to save me getting up again, uh, what were your thoughts around those? Uh, what was the first one? Um... Ah, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm stressed. Uh, yeah, that's all right. Uh, open telemetry. What's so, funny is that like, we're fully off of no longer talking about Fluent Bit and Fluent D. Oh. We're now yeah, fully yeah, yeah, talking about Prometheus. Metrics. The presentation, sorry. Metrics, right. maturity. Metrics, yeah, yeah. So the maturity of metrics yeah. in open uh, telemetry. Well, you know, Telegraph has been around for, what, 10 years? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Prometheus, same. Uh, so open telemetry compared to that is just not as mature. And yeah, I agree with that. What we did at Sumologic is what I wouldn't recommend. We devised a Telegraph receiver where you can use Telegraph inputs. Yep, uh, okay. But integrating the te Telegraph code base with the Open Telemetry code base is not easy because you need to import a lot of uh, stuff. And that so, makes sense, though, because that gets around that maturity problem, doesn't it? Okay, cool. Yeah, that was our way of doing yeah. this, but we it's a pain. Yeah. So ideally, we just try to contribute everything into the upstream, and we encourage anyone <laughs> to contribute more. That's, that's my answer. <laughs> and, and then from the scaling perspective, when you've got all those open telemetry agents forwarding stuff on, so imagine you've got you know a million of those little things chatting and trying to forward them on. How, how does that work at scale? You, right. you know, I understand how Prometheus works at scale, I'm just wondering. <laughs> Well, you know, uh, if in terms of metrics, uh, Hotel Call uses uh, Prometheus receiver, that's one. Yeah. The other thing, it's, I think it's much easier to shard it or to, uh, to, to, to share it. What we use in Kubernetes, we use the open telemetry operator with the target allocator, and we uh, shard uh, all the scrapes among as many collectors as we want. It's much easier with uh, Hotel Collector, actually. Uh, I'm talking about the Kubernetes uh, specifically. Uh, with target allocator, with open telemetry uh, operator, this is much easier to uh, scale the load than with Prometheus. Okay. All right, cool. I think we're close to time anyway, but I, if anyone else had questions, let us know. Um, maybe not. Well, I'm going to do like one last shameless plug, which is if anyone wants to look at this ebook, um, it's free and uh, you can learn to navigate Kubernetes monitoring with it. And then I'll give people two seconds for that and then we might just move on to the next thing because Austin's like, get off the stage. I'm getting the hook. <laughs>
Thanks. <laughs>